welcome to today's class. Today we'll be looking at the reactions of alkanes. Let's see some of the reactions alkanes undergo. At first, we need to take a look at an alkane, like methane. If we have methane, which is the first member of the alkane family, we need to know the type of reaction alkanes generally undergo. Looking at this alkane, which is methane, you can see that all the four bonds of carbon atom have hydrogen atoms attached to them. Remember, in organic chemistry, every carbon atom present in an organic compound must have a total of four bonds attached to it. In this alkane, we we'll have the four bonds as one, two, three, four. That is the lines represent the bonds. In some cases, you can have it as one, two, three, four. In that case, there will be nothing here. In some other cases, you can have the four bonds as one, two, three, four. In some cases, it can also be like this, one, two, three, four. What you should know is that four bonds must surround every carbon atom. It can be in this form, it can be in this form, it can be in this form and it can be in this form. It's a total of four bonds all around the carbon. Now, we are looking at the alkanes, the ones that have single bonds. You can see that the four sides of the carbon, something is up, something is down, something is in front, and something is at the back. The carbon atom is said to be completely saturated with hydrogens. Now, for a new substance to come to this carbon, let's take for instance, I am bringing an element called X to react with this alkane. You should know that there is no vacant space for this X to come and attach itself to this carbon. The only way this X can attach to the carbon here in an alkane is to knock out one of the hydrogen atoms in that alkane and replace its position and a situation where the incoming person replaces an existing atom in the carbon atom is called substitution reaction. Removing someone and replacing that person with a new person, such a reaction is known as what? Substitution reaction. Alkanes generally undergo substitution reaction because they are completely saturated. Assuming you have a compound that is not saturated, something like this, you discover that in this compound, this place is vacant. This place is also vacant. So any incoming person has a place to stay. It can stay here. In that case, we don't need to remove a H before bringing in that person. This one is addition. A new substance can add. But in this case, there is no vacant space. All the four sides are occupied. So before a new person can stay, the old existing person needs to go for the new person to stay. Such type is called substitution reaction. But when a new person comes and stays without anybody leaving, that one is called addition reaction. Now, you should know that because alkanes are completely saturated, alkanes undergo substitution reaction. Remember, alkanes are not very reactive. Because they are completely saturated, they don't easily react. They are almost inert. And that is why they are known as paraffins. Our case are also known as paraffins. And the term paraffin means little affinity. Little affinity. They are not easily attracted to other compounds because they are completely saturated. But under severe conditions, they can react. And some of the reactions our case undergo, the first reaction here we look at is halogenation reaction. The number one reaction of our case we'll be looking at here is halogenation of our case. And what is halogenation? Halogenation is the addition of a halogen 
When the halogen reacts with an alkane, that reaction is called halogenation reaction. Halogenation, halogen. Now, let's take methane for instance. If I have methane, which is CH4, reacting with a halogen, such as chlorine for instance, if I have chlorine molecule reacting with methane in the presence of ultraviolet light, UV means ultraviolet. Remember, the reaction between an alkane and halogens can only take place in the presence of ultraviolet light. Without ultraviolet light, alkanes cannot react with halogens. This simply means that alkanes do not react with halogens in the dark. In the absence of light, they cannot react. But in the presence of light, they can react. Now, what happens here is that the four hydrogen atoms present in this methane, this is what exactly happens, is reacting with the two chloride or chlorine radicals here. This will split into two. There will be a bond cleavage, homolytic bond cleavage. In the previous video, go back to the previous videos, you will see the topic I treated earlier known as bond breaking. And one of the types of bond breaking is called homolytic bond breaking. You will understand why we have free radicals here. Now, when this chlorine molecule splits into two, we have them as free radicals. The first chlorine radical comes to the halogen, picks out one of the hydrogen atoms. The first chloride radical will pick this hydrogen, forming HCl with it. Now, after picking out this hydrogen, a vacant space is created for the second chlorine radical to replace. In that case, you now have it like this. That is CH3Cl. CH3Cl plus HCl. So you can see that the reaction between an alkane and a halogen produces a halo alkane and HCl. What is a halo alkane? A halo alkane is a compound that is made up of a halogen and an alkane, an alkyl group. This is halo alkane. If I want to call it full name, I'll call it chloromethane, or I'll call it methyl chloride. Is it I call it methyl chloride, or I'll call it chloromethane? See what happens here. The two atoms of the halogen coming to react with this alkane, this is what happens. The first atom will pick one of the hydrogens from the alkane and form HCl with it. While the remaining chloride radical will replace the position of that H that was removed. If I remove one H here, I will have CH3. Now, the second chlorine will replace that position where the first chlorine was removed from. You now have CH3, Cl. So, the reaction between a halogen and an alkane produces a halo alkane. This is chloromethane, why this is methane. In summary, when chlorine reacts with methane, we produce chloromethane. If bromine reacts with methane, we produce bromomethane. There is one important note you need to take here in this reaction. When the chlorine is in excess, if I'm reacting with excess chlorine, let's take for instance, during the reaction, the chlorine we are using is in excess, while the alkane, that is the methane, is not in excess. All the hydrogen atoms in that methane will be replaced. Take note. When the halogen is in excess, the hydrogen atoms present in the methane, all of them, the four of them will be replaced. So, in that case, you'll be having, if I remove the four hydrogen atoms and replace with four chlorine atoms, I will have CCl4. And this is called, this is Cl, 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 Cl. This is called tetrachloromethane. 
methane because it's one carbon, tetrachloro because there are four chlorine atoms. So this is called tetrachloromethane. Note this. We replace all the hydrogen atoms in the methane when the halogen is in excess. But when the methane is the one in excess, if I have the methane to be in excess, something like this, when the methane is in excess, not the halogen, only one of the hydrogens will be replaced. When the methane is in excess, only one H will be substituted. But when the halogen is in excess, all the hydrogens will be substituted. So in this case, only one hydrogen will be substituted. If I remove one H here, I will have three H left. Now, one H I removed will combine with one of the chloride radicals here to give me HCl. Why the remaining chlorine here will replace the position of that H that was removed, giving us Cl. So, when the methane is in excess, we form chloromethane. Only one chlorine will be there. But when the chlorine is in excess, we form tetrachloromethane. That is the reaction between halogen and methane. That is our case. Now, another important thing you need to know about halogenation of our case is this. Halogenation reaction of alkanes take place in three stages. There are three stages of halogenation. Those three stages are step one, initiation stage. Initiation stage. You can call this stage one. Stage one is called initiation stage. What exactly is initiation stage? Remember, we are talking about the stages of halogenation. Before a halogen can react with an alkane, three things happen. There are three steps the reaction passes through before the product is formed. Those steps are what we call stages of halogenation. The stage one, is called the initiation stage. What happens at the initiation stage? The initiation stage is the stage in which the halogen molecule splits into two homolytically. This is what we mean. The chlorine molecule in the presence of ultraviolet light breaks up into free radicals this way. Remember, the dot here represents a paired electron. In a chlorine molecule, where you have a bond between two chlorine atoms, in this case, every bond is formed using two electrons. And because this is chlorine and this is chlorine, they both have equal electronegativity. So none can take the two electrons to itself, because they are both electronegative and they, are, they have equal strength. So this one will go with one electron, this one will go with the other one electron. So the dots here represent the electrons. So these are called free radicals. Free radicals. This simply means that free radicals are formed at the initiation stage. I repeat. The first step of halogenation is the stage in which free radicals are produced from the halogen molecule. The halogen will split into two with the help of ultraviolet light, forming what we call free radicals. That is what we call initiation stage. Even if you are using bromine or iodine molecule, for instance, two atoms of the iodine will break up into two in the presence of ultraviolet light, giving us iodine radicals like this. These are called free radicals. Now, the summary of initiation stage is that the initiation stage is the stage in which the halogen molecule is broken up into free radicals using ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet light is the catalyst used in halogenation reaction. And the function of the ultraviolet light is to enhance 
the breaking or the formation of free radicals. It is the ultraviolet light that breaks the halogen molecule into free radicals. Now, let's quickly go to step two. After the formation of the free radicals, which is step one, let's see what happens next. The step two is called the propagation stage. Propagation stage. What happens at the propagation stage? It's simple. At the propagation stage, the free radical produced will start attacking the alkane. Remember, the halogen molecule does not just go and attack the alkane like that, no. The halogen molecule will first split into two, which is into free radicals. One of the radicals will go and attack the alkane. This is the alkane, which we used, we used methane as an example here. Now, the first out of the two free radicals we produced, we have two of them here. The first one will go and attack the alkane. This is the first radical. It will come to attack the alkane. Attacking the alkane means knocking out one of the hydrogen atoms. So one of the hydrogen atoms here will bond with the free radical here, giving us HCl. Now, there will be a vacuum space created here. We will now have CH3 radical. This is what happens at the propagation stage. I repeat, the first stage is the stage where free radicals are formed using ultraviolet light. The second stage is called the propagation stage. And what happens at the propagation stage is that one of the free radicals produced, one of them, who attack the alkane you are using and pick one hydrogen out of from there, forming HCl with it. The alkane will be lacking one hydrogen, as you can see, instead of CH4, we we'll now have CH3. Because the first free radical that came to attack picked one of the H and formed the HCl with it. Now, the last stage, which is stage 3, is what we call the termination stage. The last stage is called the termination stage. That is the stage in which the reaction comes to an end. The termination stage is the stage which the halogenation reaction comes to a halt. It stops. What exactly happens is that the free the material radical that was formed during the propagation stage, the one whose head was knocked out will combine with the second halogen radical. Remember, there are two halogen radicals. The first one went to the alkane and pulled out one hydrogen. Now, the second radical will come and take the position of that H that was knocked out. You now have CH3Cl. And this, at this point, the reaction stops. Remember, the first stage is called the initiation stage, and at initiation stage, free radicals are produced using ultraviolet light. The second stage is called the propagation stage, and at the propagation stage, one of the free radicals produced will attack the alkane and pick one of the hydrogen atoms from the alkane, forming HCl and methyl radical. The third stage is the stage we call the termination stage. What happens at the termination stage is that the remaining free radical, the remaining one, will go and take the position of that H that was knocked out from the alkane, giving us a chloroalkane. That's, those are the three stages of halogenation.